to talk about a type of descriptive research called naturalistic observations. And naturalistic observations are basically exactly what they sound like. They're observing and recording behavior in natural environments. By natural environment, we mean things like studying lions and their natural habitat, or how Jane Goodall went and lived with the chimps to study their behavior. But naturalistic environments include more than just the jungle. When we talk about natural environments, what we mean are environments that have not been created or manipulated by an experimenter. So they really are natural. So for example, you can look at parent-child interactions while a parent is reading to their kid, or you can look at how children resolve conflicts when playing on a playground. You can even look at whether or not men or women at a mall are more likely to bust their tables. And this might seem really simple, but if you think about it, it is really important to know about natural behaviors before you go and study them or, or manipulate them in a lab. When someone is conducting a naturalistic observation, they usually try to be as unobtrusive as possible. And this is because we don't want the behaviors of the people we're looking at to change because of the presence of the experimenter. So maybe if people in a mall knew that there was someone watching whether or not they bust their tables, they might be more likely to bust them because they knew that someone was watching. And so usually researchers try to keep a low key. And they can remain low key in a number of ways. First of all, they can just sort of be quiet and off to the side or in certain situations they can observe things from the other side of a one-way mirror or you could even videotape interactions so that you can watch them later. And also, though it may not initially seem like it, naturalistic also involves a lot of training. Normally, researchers have to be taught what to look for in any given situation, and they have to be trained how to take careful notes during their observations. And because it can be so difficult, it is not uncommon to have multiple researchers conducting multiple observations so that then they can compare their observations later. So if you're interested in naturalistic observation, one thing that you might want to take a look at is the CHILDIS database. And CHILDIS stands for the Child Language Data Exchange System. The system was set up in 1984, and it was set up in order to act as a location where researchers from all over the world could store and share their data about children's use of language and how children acquire language. And it includes everything from transcripts to audio files and video files. They would actually send home audio recorders with parents so that they could record all of the interactions the parent had with the child. And so, let's say you are interested in finding out how children's concepts of luck change over time. Now, you could bring kids into the lab and just ask them about luck, but it might also be interesting to see how concepts related to luck are discussed between parent and child when the researcher isn't around. So I could log on to the child's database and search for things like luck or lucky. And the system would highlight all instances it has of those terms in its database. And I could look through them and look at what was said right before the term was used and right after. And I could get an idea about how concepts of luck are used in everyday conversations. And this brings up a point that I've kind of mentioned before, which is about the use of recording materials. So researchers don't need to be present when the observations occur in order for something to count as naturalistic observation. Instead, they can record the observations and study them later and even maybe share them with other researchers. So naturalistic observations are great in that they provide us with a snapshot of everyday life. But since we're just observers, we can't really control anything. And we can't really take into account all of the different factors that might be influencing the behaviors that we're observing. And so while we can observe children in a playground to see how they handle conflict resolution, we can't know why they used the specific strategies they used, or, or even how they learned them. And so, like all descriptive research, naturalistic observation lets us observe what's around us and lets us describe natural behavior, but it doesn't really let us pick apart all of the different variables that might be influencing the behavior.